Hello and welcome to the second of our Halloween special videos uh, from the Cromwell Museum. Uh, my name's Stuart, I'm the curator of the museum and again here inside the historic courtroom at Huntingdon Town Hall. Uh, although this courtroom dates to the 18th century, it stands on a site where there has been justice dealt in the county for at least the last 600 years. And here on this site we know a number of witch trials took place in the 16th and 17th century. Today we talk a little bit about probably one of the most famous sets of witch trials, which took place in May of 1646. These were a number of witches from throughout Huntingdonshire who were accused by the assistance of the infamous witch finder general, Matthew Hopkins. Although witchcraft prosecutions have been in decline by the mid-1600s, they came again into the forefront of people's minds with the coming of the civil wars. As political, economic and social chaos covered the country and the world was turned upside down, people began to look for someone for blame for their woes in this chaotic, divided and fearful time. Traditional systems of law and order were breaking down as many of those who would have rationalised or dismissed such accusations were away at the war. Into this vacuum emerged Matthew Hopkins, the self-styled Witchfinder General. Now, contrary to the version in the Vincent Price horror film, Hopkins was a young man, born around about 1620. Little is known about his background. He first appears around 1644 when an associate called John Stern accused a group of women in Manningtree in Essex of trying to kill him with sorcery. Hopkins enthusiastically joined in with these investigations that involved subjecting the accused to sleep deprivation and searches of their bodies by women known as searchers or seekers, looking for a physical deformity or blemish which could be called the devil's mark. This became Hopkins' trade over the next two years, with no legal authority, but effectively acting as a freelance witch finder. Hopkins moved on to Bury St Edmunds to foment the largest witch trial in English history, where 18 people were hanged on evidence supplied in his, by him and uh, John Stern. Hopkins and Stern began to travel around eastern England as self-appointed witch finders, aided by women called prickers, who searched the bodies for the accused of these devil's marks, extra nipples at which a witch is familiar, um, an animal, uh, for instance, with a name or personality who was supposed to be sent by the devil to do the witch's bidding, was supposed to suckle. Now, despite torture being illegal, and most of it, uh, most of the things they were up to certainly were beyond that, they were supposed to then provide various tests to the witch. Walking a woman to sort of put her into exhaustion before questioning, making a woman stand or sit without food or water, putting them in stress positions, and the infamous ducking or swimming in a stream or river, where the accused would be tied up, tied to men on each bank and thrown into the water to see whether she sank or floated. Stern came to Huntingdonshire in spring of 1646. We have his published account of the interrogation of several witches who were brought to him and tried at Huntingdon. Sadly, the trial records were destroyed by fire in the early 18th century, so we have no details of these or indeed the exact number of convictions. It's also unknown whether Hopkins himself attended these trials. First of them was a lady from Bythorn, a lady called Anne Desborough, who was arrested on suspicion of being a witch on the 8th of April 1646, when she confessed before the minister Joseph Coish, Thomas Becker Yeoman and others at Bythorn that some year previous, 30 years previously, a diabolical spirit in the shape of an animal had appeared to her at her former home at Titchmarsh in Northamptonshire. Allowing the creature to suckle at her witch's mark, it then promised to help her destroy her enemies and their livestock, and no evidence was actually recorded of any destruction. Nothing is known about the fate of Anne Desborough, and it's thought likely she may have been executed with others from the county in May of 1646. From the village of Great Catworth, Francis Moore and Elizabeth Weed, or Weed were being a widow. Moore was examined by Nicholas Pedley, a local justice of the peace, on the 9th of April 1646. She confessed that nine years earlier she had received a black puppy from Margaret Simpson of Great Catworth, who told her it would, it would do her bidding and kill cattle if she cursed them. At roughly the same time, Elizabeth Weed gave her a white cat for the same purpose, if she agreed to enter into a covenant. She did so, and then set about revenging herself on old enemies. These included William Foster, 
who 16 years previously would have hanged two of her children for an offering to take a piece of bread. Ten years on, she cursed Foster, and he died in agony eight days later. In addition, she admitted responsibility for killing cows belonging to Edward Hull and Peter Brown in about 1641. She subsequently claimed to have killed both familiars about one year since, but was now haunted by their spirits. Another magistrate, Robert Barnard, took the dispositions of Peter Slater, a shepherd of Great Catworth, and William Searle, a yeoman of Little Catworth, on the 7th of April 1646. When Slater heard that Moore had been arrested on suspicion of witchcraft, he went to her and asked whether she was responsible for the death of his wife 21 years earlier. She confessed, stating that they had fallen out and she had subsequently cursed her. Searle informs that he was present when Moore confessed to being a witch. She also admitted to killing his capons and hogs. Elizabeth Weed was examined by Robert Barnard and Nicholas Pedley, Justices of the Peace, on the 31st of March 1646. She confessed that 21 years previously, three spirits had appeared to her, asking her to renounce God and Christ. She subsequently entered into a covenant with the devil, sealed her with her own blood. As a reward, she was granted three demons, two in the shape of animals that helped her do harm, and one in the shape of a young man with whom she slept. Her imps were responsible, amongst other things, for the deaths of a child of Mr. Henry Bedell of Catworth, and livestock belonging to Edward Musgrave, John Musgrave, William Musgrave, and Thomas Thorpe, all of Catworth. They were unable to effect any harm, however, against the persons of either Henry Bedell or Edward Musgrave, presumably because they were God-fearing men. Finally, she confessed that she had now tired of the contract and did due to resort to church to summons and also to the minister's house to repetition, seemingly at the behest of the minister, Mr. Poole, whose preaching she was well pleased with. John Stern was also present at these hearings. He was almost certainly alluding to we that he said that some had been esteemed one of the witches of Great Catworth as a saint on earth. She subsequently recanted and confessed all at the gallows before her death in my hearing. According to Stern, the execution of these Huntingdonshire witches occurred in May 1646. From Keyston, Elizabeth Chandler, widow, John Clark Sr., John Clark Jr., labourer, and the former's wife, Jane or Joan Wallace, spinster. Elizabeth Chandler was examined by Robert Bernard and Nicholas Pedley, Justice of the Peace, on the 7th of April 1646. She claimed to have been pestered by imps and spirits, which she denied encouraging for many years. She also denied striking Catherine, the daughter of one good wife Darnell, Mary Darnell of Keyston, or doing any harm to the family, despite the fact that Mary Darnell was the cause of her being ducked two years previously. The so-called imps were in fact a lock of wood and a stick, which she called Beelzebub and Trullibub respectively. Mary Darnell, the wife of William the village blacksmith, provided more detailed evidence to the magistrates the same day, regarding the bewitchment and sufferings of her daughter Catherine, aged about nine. She also claimed to have overheard one Lewis Carmel said that Chandler had confessed to bewitching a dish of frumenty. While this was examined by Sir Robert Osborne, Justice of the Peace, on the 16th of April 1646, she claimed to have been pestered by spirits following the visit of a mysterious dark stranger, calling himself Mr Blackman. The imps brought her money, but she did not confess to any evil doing. Two days previously, Wallace had confessed the same to us were Edward Wingfield and John Guy Lacht. Stern refers to her as a Joan Wallace, a very ignorant, sottish woman. John Clark Jr. was examined by John Castell, J.P., on the 2nd of May, 1646. He affirmed that two weeks earlier, travelling on the Sabbath, he had overtaken a man and three women between Stanick and Rawns in Northamptonshire. Being about three miles from his home in Keyston, he denied, however, that he had... He had ever told her or said that he had any marks cut off, or that he had had any places of meeting with any witches, or that he had any consultation or made any compact with the devil, or ever knew what belonged to any such matter. Clark would appear to have been answering accusations levelled against him by one John Brown of Rawns uh, in Northamptonshire, who was examined the same day by Castell. He reported to the magistrate that whilst travelling from Higham Ferrers to Rawns, he met a man, John Clark Jr., at Stanick, who was coming from Erlingborough. 
two men spoke, and Clark admitted that he was returning from a visit to his uncle at Erlingborough. He then admitted to Brown that he was the son of the Clarks of Keyston, who had recently been accused of being witches. Both he and his parents had been searched for marks, but Clark Jr. claimed that he had cut his off. When Brown said that he too had been searched. Clark is alleged to have replied that, I do not believe you are a witch, for I never saw you at our meetings. Brown retorted that perhaps there were meetings at several places, but the two men falling out, they both departed. No official records implicating Clark's parents survive, and the fate of the accused is also unrecorded. In an undated letter of dubious provenance, printed as a preface to John Gould's work on witchcraft in 1646, Matthew Hopkins referred to his recent visit to the town of Kimbolton in Huntingdonshire in search of suspected witches. No other details of his visit, visit, though, survive. From Molesworth, the witches, Ellen, the wife of William Shepherd, labourer, and John Winnick, a labourer. Shepherd was examined by Robert Bernard and Nicholas Pedley, just as of the piece on the 8th of April 1646. A Constance Musher and Swearer, about five years previously, a spirit in the hair shape of a rat had appeared to Shepherd whilst her children were quarrelling. Since then, they had demanded her constant attention and suckled from her, but she claimed that they had done no ill. She also wished to be rid of them and to leave her former course of cursing and swearing. Three days later, Winnick was examined by the same magistrates. He admitted that 29 years earlier, whilst a bachelor and living with a servant as a servant with one Bateman, who kept the Georgian at Thrapston in Northamptonshire, he resorted to using a spirit to discover a purse that he had lost. He subsequently agreed to enter into a covenant with the devil and was granted imps to do his mischief. He had sent the bear spirit to provoke the maid servant of Mr. Say of Molesworth to steal food for him out of her master's house. Further details about Winnick are added by Stern, who claimed that he had confessed to meetings of more than 20 winches in Huntingdonshire prior to his execution in May 1646. Ellen, the wife of William Shepherd, labourer, and John Winnick, labourer, were both executed in May 1646 at Huntingdon. John Stern refers to a woman of St. Neots being searched two or three times, but no marks found. Many of the townsmen remained convinced of her guilt, and so she was swum. Though she seems to have floated, for reasons unexplained, she was not further meddled with then. A little later, Stern reported that mysterious bite marks were found on her body, and rumoured sightings of spectral dogs in the town added to the general suspicion. No more formal action, however, would appear to have followed. A Puritan cleric from Huntingdonshire, who had observed Stern at work by the name of John Gall, preached against Hopkins and then published a pamphlet, Select Cases of Conscience Touching Witches and Witchcraft, which exposed the self-appointed witchfinder's methods. This seems to have had an impact, as more courts began to question his methods and indeed refused to convict. Hopkins therefore retired to Manningtree in Essex, where he wrote the self-justifying book the discovery of witches. The books helped cement his reputation, but the political climate was changing as the Civil War was coming to an end, and witch trials became fewer in number. Hopkins died a young man in 1647, most probably from tuberculosis. Furthest and north and west that any of the witch trials of Matthew Hopkins got was here in Huntingdon. I hope you enjoyed that. hope you found that interesting. We've still got one more video to come, which is the uh, final witch trial associated with Huntingdonshire, um, which may or may not have taken place, but you'll find out about that in our third video. In the meantime, please do remember to uh, like and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget also to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Details are in the contact card at the end. Otherwise, hope you have a very happy Halloween season and remember to stay safe in these very strange and different times. Thank you.